Hi, I'm Mr Maths and today we'll be looking at an AQA Functional Skills Level 2 Mathematics paper and this paper is a non-calculator paper. So here are some things to remember. The exam is 30 minutes long. There are 20 points available. Remember to show all your working out. And don't panic. If you don't know the answer to a question, just move on to the next one. The marks go towards both exams. A pass is 32 to 33 marks out of 80 marks. This is why it's important not to panic and just to move on to the next question. Question one. Here is a scatter diagram. Four of the points are labelled. Which one of these points is an outlier? Circle your answer. So when you see a scatter graph like this, what you've got to perceive is a trend. So all these points of data are heading in a certain direction. If I just draw on the, on the graph here, if you can see that all these points are going in one direction. Now an outlier would be something or a point of data that is kind of bucking the trend and not within the trend. So our outlier would be this fella here. Okay, so the answer to the question is C. Question two, work out 942,795 minus 350,823. Now this is just a basic question to see if you know how to do column subtraction, which would involve some borrowing from different columns. So let's just write this out. Remembering that the number on the left goes on the top. Three from five we can do, that's two. Two from nine we can do, which is a seven. Eight from seven we can't do. We can't take eight away from seven, so we're gonna do borrow from here, make that a one, and make that a one there. Eight from 17 is a nine. Nothing from one is one. Five from four we can't do, so we're gonna have to borrow from here, nine, make that an eight. Take 5 off of 14, which is 9, and 3 from 8, which will be 5. So there's our answer. Make sure that's a comma and not a dot. Question 3. The frequency tree shows information about the colour of 44 items. One of these items is chosen at random. Work out the probability that the item is blue. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So the total, as we see at the start of that, this probability tree, is 44. It's 44. And the probability that the item will be blue would be 24 out of that, that 44. So we do have 24 out of 44. But we need to make it in its simplest form. So we'd, what I would do is start dividing it down. Let's divide 44 by 2. You're going to get it would equal 22, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. We can cut that in half again, can't we? So we could have 11 over 6. So our answer would be 11 over 6, because that would be this fraction in its simplest form. Question 4. Work out 19% of 150. Now if we know our basic percentage facts, we would know how to turn 150, into, or we'd know what 10% of 150 is. So 10% of 100 of 150 of 150 equals 
and you just bounce that decimal point once to the right sorry once to the left equals 15 so you imagine the decimal point, point zero. so 1% we just bounce it twice to the left so 1% of 150 equals 1.50 can you see we just move it to the left so now we know what 10% is and we know what 1% is so 19% is going to be one of these 10% which is 15 plus 1.5 times 9 so let's just do that 1.5 times 9 there's one decimal place here just put that there just to remind me I've got to put that on at the end so 9 9 times 5 is 45 once times 9 is 9 10 11 12 13 13 one decimal place is there now we're going to add that to our 15 15 13.5 Put the zero there, so have a nice little placeholder. Five decimal point five six seven eight and twenty eight. So our answer would be twenty eight point five. Question five Work out the size of angle X and the size of angle Y. Now it's important that we know what angles equal up to especially when there's a, it's bisecting parallel lines. Now if we look at X, we know the total of a whole circle is 360 60 degrees. Whoops. So we know that these opposite angles here, this one that's 115, are always the same. Okay, So X is going to be 115. X equals 115. Angle Y would be the same as this angle here. And this is on a straight line. So 115, take that away from 180, we're going to get what this angle is, which is also going to give us this angle Y. So 180 minus 115. Yeah. It's going to be five, that's a seven there. One foot seven is six, one for one is zero. So this angle here, y, will be 65 degrees. And we can check our answer by adding 115 and 115, 5, 115, 65, and 65 is going to make 360. 4 times 5 is 20, 6 and 6 is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and there we go, look, 360. So what x is 115 degrees, and y is 65 degrees. Question 6, baby. Joe has a baby. She calls the baby Ella. 6a, the graph can be used to convert between grams and ounces. At birth, Ella weighs 3.5 kilograms. Did Ella weigh more than eight pounds? Use one pound equals 16 ounces. You must show you're working. First of all, we're gonna to have to convert our kilograms into grams. So 3.5 three kilograms equals 3,500 grams. There's a thousand grams to a kilogram, so all we've done is bounce that decimal point three times to the right. So it was here, one, two, three, and that's really when you're going to get your grams. And now we're going to go back to the chart and convert 3,500 grams into ounces. So we're going to put some lines on this chart here. As we can see, that's as we 
you can see there's 3,500 there labelled. We're going to go all the way across that line there. Okay, now we've got the lines on our graph, our conversion graph, remember going across and then down, we can see that it's just over 120 ounces. So I would, and each square there is worth two. So I think it's about 124 ounces. So what we could do is multiply up our 16s to see how many we get with that. We could take a guess. So let's say we multiplied six. Oh, let's say we multiplied our 16 by five. 16 times five and see if we get anywhere near 124. Five times six is 30. Once times five is five, six, seven, eight. That's 80 ounces, so that's more than five. Now we could uh, multiply our 16 by two, which would be 32. We could, yeah, so 16, so we'll add 32 to it, which would be seven pounds, 32, 80, two, eight, nine, 100, two and zero, so eight and three is 11. 112. Can we get another 16 onto that? So I can't get a whole 16 to make 124. So let's just quickly 1, 2, 4, minus 1, 1, 2, 2, 1 from 2 is 1, and 1 is 0. So we've got 12. So we've got 12 ounces left which would be of 16 that would be three quarters of 16 wouldn't it because 16 has four fours but three fours are 12 so that's three quarters which is 0 0.75 so we've got seven and then 0 0.75 here So in total it's 7.75 pounds, but the question says, did Ella weigh more than eight pounds? No, she didn't. So we're gonna write no. She weighed weighed 7.75. Question six. Here are the birth weights of seven other babies born on the same day as Ella. Joe's mum says Ella's weight of 3.5 is more than av the average weight of the other seven babies. Joe says it depends on which type of average you use. Show that Joe is correct. I can't imagine that this would be a conversation you'd have after giving birth. But for the purpose of this test, we'll answer it. Now, now, we know about our averages. We know there's the mode, there's the mean, and the median. What we're going to do is we're going to find out what all of them are. Now, the first one we're going to do is the median, which is the one in the middle, which means we're going to put them in order from lowest to highest, and then find out the middle value, and that will give us the median. So let's write here median. Median. So you'd have to put the smallest first, which is 2.3. They appear to be in that correct order anyway. Two, oops. Two point five, two point seven, three point 
and 4. So to find the median we just cross off So the median is 3.6. Now the mode is the one there is the most of. And then we can see quite clearly there's four babies that were born at the weight of four kilograms. So the mode is four. four the mode is always the most amount. There's four of those, there's only one of other, each other weight. So now we're going to find the mean average, which means we're going to total all of the weights up and then divide it by the number of weights there are. So there are seven weights, but we're going to add them all up now. Three times four is, is 12. So we can add those fours up for a start. So we've got 12 plus three. 3.6 So we're going to do this right 3.6 which would be We don't need to do that there actually which would be 15.6 15.6 So we've done those so we'll add 2.7 15.6 plus 2.7 underneath 6 and 7 is 13 carry that bring the decimal point in 5 6 7 8 18.3 now 2.5 and 2.3 would add up to 5 so we're going to add a 5 there add 5 looks like a 6 let's just quickly rub that out Now we've got to add 2.5. 5, 6, 7, 8, we've got an 8 there. Eight, there's 20, 10 even, 10. And that's going to be 20, 20.8, 20 okay? Now, all we have to add now is the 2.3. 2.3, and we're going to get a different number again to what is, is that a one? Eight, one, 10, 11, Put one there, a one there, it's going to be a three. And then we bring the two down. So 23.1. And then we're going to divide that by seven. Okay, now all we have to do is divide our 23.1 by seven. So let's quickly put that in a bus stop. Seven, 23.1. 7's into 2, you can't do, so put a 0. 7's into 23. There's a 3 there. There's a 2 there, even. It's 3 with a remainder 2. So you put that 2 there. Let's put a decimal point up. 7's into 21. It's 3. So our mean average... is 3.3 so the median is 3.6 the mode is 4 and the mean average is 3.3 question 6 C Joe sees this special offer on a pack of nappies 
a third off usual price. Nappies, pack of 25, usual price £6.75. Joe normally buys nappies that cost 21p each. How much will Joe save per nappy by buying this pack? You must show your working out. So she has 25 nappies. 25 nappies. Equal £6.75. Now to find that one third off, we're going to divide these nappies by three to find out what a third of these nappies prices are. So let's divide this by three. So we'll do six, seven, five divided by three. Threes into six, go twice. Threes into seven, go twice. Put a dot there. And there's a remainder of one. Threes into 15, three fives, goes five times. So we're gonna minus off two pound 25 because that is a third of the cost. Five from five is zero, two from seven is five, and two from six is four. So four pound 50. So £4.50 for 25 nappies. So we can divide £4.50 by 25. So we'll put the decimal points in that. So if we just do 450 divided by 25, we should see what we get. Probably already can work it out. So 25 into 4 you can't do. 25 into 45. Cross that out, I'll put a zero there. 45. There's one remainder 20, isn't it? One remainder 20, so 25 into 200 is going to be one, two, three, four, eight. Eight. Okay, but we know our decimal point is in between here, so we're going to bring that up. So it's 0 0.8, so 18p. So the question says, how much will Joe save per nappy by buying this pack? And her nappies at the moment cost 21p. So we take the 18p off of 21p, and we're going to get 3p, aren't we? 3p. So our answer is 3p. She saves 3p. Saves 3p per nappy. I've been Mr. Maths. Please like and subscribe.